purchasing 1,100 acres for hunting land. And we were going to sell off some of the land. And in that process, we started becoming really concerned about the quality of the meat we were eating. At the same time, we had had several family members that got sick and passed away. And so all this culminated in being concerned about what was the quality of the meat we were eating and what impact was it having on our health. In addition to the health concerns that we had about the quality of the meat in the store, I also had a chance to go into a concentrated animal facility operation uh, in the same town where our farm is located. And in this case, this was a chicken operation. I was taken in one of these facilities and there were 40,000 chickens in one barn. They were about two to three days from being processed. They had no room to move at all. Their food came down from the ceilings, their water came down from the ceilings, and as soon as the operator felt they had eaten enough, the lights are turned off so they would go to sleep. They didn't want these animals moving. Um, they wanted them eating and sleeping, and that's all. At five to six weeks, these animals start having heart attacks and their feet can't support their weight. And so every day they go through and they kill hundreds of them uh, that aren't doing well. We just didn't like it, the, the stress the animals were under, the cruelty, the way they were treated. It, that just became a big motivating factor for us to start making the conversion to our own farm. So we started researching what would be a healthy way to raise animals in a way that honored the way they were designed to be raised in the outdoors and honored the life they were supposed to live. How were cows designed to be raised? They need to be raised in an environment where they're moved to fresh grass daily. They should not be exposed to pesticides. For pigs, it's raising them in an outdoor environment as opposed to inside in a barn where they're crowded, to where they're outdoors, they're rooting, they're eating nuts, they're eating apples, they're moving around, they have a lot of space to move around. The chickens, when they come in, they need to be protected with heat for about three weeks, and then they can be moved to the outdoors where they eat grass, they eat bugs, that's what they want to do, and that's the life that we wanted them to live, and that's what we think we're doing at Harmony Creek Farms. In 2014, we started making the conversion to a working farm. The first thing we thought about was how to design the system for the cows. So we designed movable water lines that could move with the cows so they would have fresh water wherever they were and they would be able to be moved to fresh grass daily. We designed a fencing system that allowed us to birth up near the barn and protect those animals while they were birthing and then move them out into the bigger pastures. We breed our cows so that they birth in the spring and that's because when they birth, which is usually April to May, we want them to be able to have green grass to eat, uh, to help them recover from the birthing process. Most of your commercial operations would be birthing a lot sooner in the winter and birthing the animals in the barn. So our operation is designed to mimic ma nature when they would normally be birthing um, if they were out in the wild. Most of our cattle are right now in a 100 acre pasture and we divide that up into several paddocks. The cattle get to move over one section each day with our, our movable fencing system until we've moved all the way through that paddock and then we just move them to the next paddock. Because our goal is to keep those cattle on fresh grass daily. Most of your nutrition and energy is in the top three inches of the grass. So we only want the top couple inches eaten and they move right next um, to that section and start over again the next day. People ask us, what do you feed your cattle in the winter if they're 100% grass fed, which they are. So in the winter, we have our hay um, bales that we bring in and we lay them strategically all over the field so that we can just move them to the next set of hay bales each day so we also keep them moving through the winter. We also do something with fermented wrapped grass 
They really like that, and so we have some of that in the pasture in the winter, and we unwrap those bales, and they're able to eat that also, and that's a high energy source for them. They eat grass only all year round. We have two types of chickens that we raise on the farm. The one kind is called broilers. That's, that's the meat chicken. Those chickens come in through the mail, actually, when they're one day old. They are shipped on the day that uh, they're born, and they're amazingly healthy. And we put them in a brooder room where we keep the heat starting at 95 degrees, and we gradually pull that heat down as they're getting feathers. And as soon as they're able to regulate their own heat, which is around three weeks, we move them outside in a protected chicken tractor. They get to eat the grass, they get to eat the bugs. They're also fed a non-GMO feed, and those tractors move daily onto fresh grass, and that's the type of life they live. The other chickens we have are layers. That's where we get our eggs from. They're in a protected area in the barn where their nesting boxes are. And at noon, we open the doors to that facility and they're surrounded by clover pastures. And so they go out in the clover pastures during the day and eat the grass and bugs. And then they come in on their own at night. We do checks to make sure everybody's in and they're all protected. And uh, that's how their day goes. The pigs are raised outdoors their entire life. When they're small, we have a protected area where they can go in and get protection from the weather. But once they reach a couple months old, they don't need that anymore. And they live in the woods and they eat everything they can eat, really. They, they root around, uh, they eat plants, they eat small trees, actually. They eat acorns. They eat apples, whatever, we, we take them corn, and they also have access to non-GMO feed. Um, once they've totally eaten through an area, we move them also in the woods to a new area so they have fresh greens. We usually wrap up our pig program in December, and we start back at it in March or April. We have about 15 different hives right now and we're still in a learning process with the bees they are fascinating when there is enough honey we take honey and we take it directly on the day that we pull that honey from the hive we spin it out and we put it in jars and that's how our honey is bottled and so you're getting a product that's never been heated it has pollen in it it's good for uh, people with allergies to help them counteract any allergy problems they're having and it, it's just a it's a raw product. Most of what you see in the store is going to have, be heated. Um, that ends up destroying a lot of the good stuff in the honey. And so ours is a totally raw product. So when you buy from Harmon Creek Farms, you're getting an animal that's been raised in a natural environment, the, the way that nature designed these animals to be raised. It's a very stress-free environment. They're not getting injected with antibiotics. They're not being raised in a closed confinement operation. They're out in the open the way nature designed them to be. One of the surprising things I'm finding at people coming into the store is that we're getting a lot of people that are starting to have health problems or many that have some significant health problems. And that's ultimately the reason why we do what we're doing uh, at Harmon Creek Farms to raise meat that is raised in the most healthy manner possible, in sync with nature, and free of all the antibiotics, pesticides, and herbicides, and that results in an overall healthier product for our customers. <laughs>